Hey everyone, welcome back to the video series of Amazon Data Analytics Speciality. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we'll be discussing about the object locking in S3. As we all aware that S3 have built-in features and along with like integrated services, it helps us to maintain security of S3 buckets. And all of these uh, built-in features are already covered bucket list, sorry, bucket policy, access control list, replication and versioning in, in my previous videos. And today's focus will be object locking. And if you want to check those videos, I'll provide the link in the video. Object locking in Amazon S3 is a feature that allow us to enforce write once, read many model for S3 objects and that for short stand as warm. It means that once you lock an object, it can't be modified or deleted for a specific retention period. It is very useful in certain use cases such as healthcare or legal documents or even the regulatory requirements for any industries. It works only on version buckets and once uh, object locking is enabled, it can't be disabled. Generally, object locks apply to individual object versions only, but users still can configure default retention period for the objects of the at the bucket level. And one thing, but one thing which we have to keep in mind, object lock on an object uh, overrides the bucket retention policy. We'll see that in, uh, in the demo. And there are two ways to manage object retention, retention period and legal hold. So let's take a look into them. Retention periods have two modes, governance mode and the compliance mode. In governance mode, user can't override delete an object version uh, or alter during the retention period. Uh, but root user or a user with high privilege still can delete it. So it gives us a flexibility to still delete the file with special permission. In compliance mode, none of the users, including the root user, can't delete and override the uh, object version. And when an object is uh, logged in compliance mode, its retention mode can't be changed too. And we'll see in, in a demo like how governance mode and compliance mode uh, are different. The basic uh, major difference in both of them is like in compliance mode, users, irrespective of like what permission it have or whether it's root, they can't delete it. However, in go governance with special privileges, uh, you, they still can delete the file. Uh, next is the legal hold. So that's like another way to do it. So in legal hold basically prevents an object uh, version from being overwritten and deleted. So it's pretty same as retention period. The only difference is like it does not have an retention period associated with it. So basically, uh, as we know, in governance mode and compliance mode, or like in retention period mode, basically we have to specify a, a, a certain period <clears throat> that's called retention till that uh, users can't delete override the object. However, in legal hold, there is no such retention period and it remains ineffective until it's removed. So we'll see that in the demo. And legal hold can be freely placed and removed by any user who have the uh, appropriate permissions and the permission is S3 object legal put object legal hold and legal holds are independent from retention period uh, and other thing is like a bucket can have both legal hold and a retention period uh, either one of them or none of them and uh, to understand this like we can uh, so for example our, a bucket or version have uh, sorry uh, an object version have a legal hold or we can say a, a legal hold is on the object version even along with the retention period. So even if retention periods expire, the object does not lose the warm protection because it has not been explicitly removed. 
okay uh that's like one of the use cases or like you can think it about like a question comes in the exam where it says a company needs to store its accounting records in amazon s3 no one at the company including administrative users root users should be able to delete for 10 year 10 years entire like 10 year period uh, for regulatory reasons let's say so what will be the like best solution for that so we have four options and as we know like object Com like object lock in compliance mode is the best solution because in that case even like root users or any user with any specific permission won't be able to delete it however in gov governance mode users uh, with special permissions can delete it okay let's jump to the uh, demo and one second so we'll start with a new bucket uh, uh, as just to understand like where it is applicable. So we'll give it data tech demo, let's say 44, that's a by bucket name. We keep everything as it is, but we have to enable the versioning. That's like a one condition, like a object lock can be applied only those buckets which are version which are version enabled and after that we click on advanced setting and by default it is disable we have to click on enable and accept and acknowledge it okay let's click on create bucket okay now let's go to the bucket so in this bucket um, as we saw like uh, one second like as we saw that uh, we enable the object load uh, uh, object lock so where we can see that like click on the properties scroll down here you can see bucket versioning is enabled and if we go here like if we scroll down you will uh, you will find there is an object lock which is enable and as I as I said previously like once it's enabled we can't disable it so let's try to this let's see how how that works if we click on add it and you can see there is a pop-up which says once s3 object is enabled you can't disable or suspend this so uh, object lock is enabled for this bucket it can't be disabled but this editing buttons allow us to uh, set it like a default uh, retention uh, for the whole bucket so that you can do just click on enable select the mode whatever mode you want for example co governance or compliance then you put uh, let's say 30 days so what basically it means like all the objects in this bucket will have uh, governance mode uh, like uh, by default and retention period will be 30 days uh, so this can be done if uh, you want to apply object locking at the bucket level but we'll I'll show you it's more useful like when we apply it at the object level in that case we can have uh, different object locking options or uh, different locking things also different locking retention periods or uh, like a legal hold based on our requirements Okay, so I'm not going to save it, but I just want to show you uh, like how we can apply uh, object locking and retention period at uh, at bucket level. So this is like, and this is like how we can apply retention period modes on bucket level. And I'll cancel it. Let's we go to objects one more time. Now we will upload two objects. Let's upload these two files. Okay, we don't do anything. Click on upload. Okay, so the both of them are uploaded successfully. And now I'm gonna show like we can apply retention period or legal hold uh, individually to our object. So we'll go into this. 
So if we, we're going into the, our first object, then we scroll down in uh, properties. Like if you scroll down, you will find that like there are two options. One second. One is called object lock legal hold. The other one is object lock retention. So if you click on edit, if we enable this, that will enable the legal hold. And as I mentioned, we can have both legal hold and retention together and legal hold does not have any retention period. So you can see we don't have any options where uh, it is asking for how many days it, uh, we need to retain the object. And uh, uh, the other thing is like, we can disable it. until it's not disabled, the warm uh, protection is there for the for this object. I'm not going to enable it. I just want to show you something of two different modes. So I'll go and I'll, I'll do the object lock retention for this one. So I'll click on edit and enable it for the for like for this object. I'll take the governance mode and I pick the date retention until date. So I'm picking for tomorrow. So that will be like one day. But you can uh, like depending on your use case, you can have a bigger retention uh, period. Click on save. So on this object, we have governance mode. <clears throat> on the second object, I'll create the compliance. So I'll go on properties, same thing. Uh, like you can individually apply a legal hold, a local lock retention. So I'll going to do the retention enable the retention select compliance mode and in compliance mode as we know it's immutable basically we can't delete it until the retention date has passed so we'll select tomorrow for this to save changes we go to our bucket basically now let's go to the bucket and in this bucket we have two object one object is uh, uh, have a governance mode retention period and the second one is the compliance mode so what we'll do and as we know in governance mode uh, like root users or users with any specific permissions can delete uh, even before the retention period so for both of them retention period is still tomorrow so uh, so and uh, what that means is like if we delete these two files uh, this file should go However, this file should not, we should not be able to do it because this file have compliance mode and compliance mode, no user, including user, including root can't delete it. So uh, I just want to show you something which, uh, okay. So uh, like the purpose to show this is like how the versioning plays a role here too. So I just want to show that. So if we select both of them, as per our, our understanding, the first one should delete, second should not be. So let's click on delete. And here, let's copy paste delete. Okay, awesome. Now, anything failed to delete? So it, it like it's basically deleted both of them. So if we go here, you will see our, one second, like it's loading. So you will see our bucket is empty, but that's not the case. If you click on so versions, like you will see both files are there with delete markers. So original files are retained. And uh, uh, however, we still have the delete marker. So as we know, delete marker is basically uh, as the, it, in delete marker, if we delete the delete marker, it will bring back the original file. So in this case, what we will do, we will delete all of them. So for example, if we deleted just these two, it would bring back these original versions. But I want to show you that we want to delete all these files. And if we click on delete, and so far, like from object locking perspective, they both are there because as I said, because of the versioning, 
it just created uh, like a delete marker or it places a delete marker, but original version is still retained. So in like technically nothing is delete. Now, if we select all of them, click on delete and type permanent delete here. Let me copy this. And see, you see, objects are deleted, but with one error. So it failed to delete this file, which have the compliance mode retention policy. So that's what I want to show you. Sometimes people get confused. Let me go back to my bucket. If we go back to our bucket, the file is still there. So sometime, uh, like what basically I want to explain here, like both in compliance and governance, when you delete something because of the versioning or due to the versioning and a new object is placed, like the object is uh, placed as a delete marker and the original version is retained. So when you're deleting something uh, with the governance or compliance policy, that doesn't mean like it is deleted. If you check the, like the version, you will see now like it's not there but like in the uh, as you saw that you will see the delete marker and the original version so if you have to delete it completely you s delete the uh, original version along with delete marker and as we know in compliance mode you do user can't delete the uh, uh, user can't delete the objects irrespect of what kind of permission they have and that's what we seen when we're trying to delete it uh, it's unable to delete so that's all for this video thanks for uh, watching it stay tuned for the next video have a good one thank you